Good morning, Remy. Good morning, Breck. Is it rain in there? We got rain here. Yesterday. And, and oh, we also a blizzard warning for Southern California, which um, never happens. Never happens. Like, I mean, there's even a blizzard warning for Los Angeles, which would be amazing if it's if they actually got stuck. I think that Mother Nature is like, she's mad all across the United States because the weather is unruly everywhere. Like, where we live in Minnesota, they're calling it um, top five, top five snowstorms ever. This one that they're getting right now. Hey, and remember, we were supposed to have a dry winter. That's what they predicted was a very dry winter. So. <laughs> no. Yesterday we had rain and then super windy. Like, felt like the trailer house, the little trailer house here was going to take flight. Um, and we had, like, three of our pens, like our ones that are not undercover, they were filled with tumbleweeds, which since we've lived here has never happened with horses in them. Like the horses were trapped in the tumbleweeds. So many. Well, the one good thing is if it rains enough, the tumbleweeds won't come anymore because they're a shallow rooted weed. So if it rains a lot and other stuff can replace them. Well, I feel like it has rained a lot. So I'm, lot. Just, I'm just, I'm just letting you know, I mean, it happens for us out here is that we get grass instead of tumbleweeds when it rains a lot, but if it just rains a little bit, we get a lot of tumbleweeds. Um, oh, James went to a Cal sale in Northern California, which means we have to cross the grapevine. So he usually leaves early in the morning because it's a specialty sale up in Hanford. And uh, he made sure he, he got up there last night to get across the grapevine because there's these giant like uh, gates at the push, put across it. So you can't um, cross the grapevine from that's like, the, oh, when the weather's bad. Yeah. And it's like the gateway between Northern and Southern California. And uh, so... I, I, you know what? I went to sleep. I think he made it across. I didn't hear anything. This dot looks like it's up in Hanford or near Oberlin. So we'll be on a wing and a prayer. We're, we're hoping for it. I mean, doesn't it? I feel like it seems like, well, we did talk last week. We talked and um, it got up on the podcast, but it's not up on YouTube yet. We're working on that. It does not. YouTube it takes me so long to upload, like, I don't know why, hours, I'm talking hours to upload a damn video. Hopefully it works better this week than last week. Fingers and crossed. Ho yeah, hopefully you guys get a twofer this week so you get to see our faces for two hours this week. Oh, shit. But it feels like so long ago from last week that we talked. It's just, I don't know. I have no idea. So you got all you got your sale catalog. We talked about last week though, but you got your sale catalog out there. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot That's of videos. There's, there's a lot of videos up there for your sale. Um, I did lessons this week until today because it's supposed to, we we're supposed to wake up yesterday too, and Breck didn't wake up yesterday. I woke up at four thirty this morning when Breck uh, sent me a second text message and. Uh, this is me in 10 minutes. This is my. Well, unlike, my... unlike Remy, <laughs> the text message, I did not wake up to see or receive the text message. So, um, yeah, it was a fun, fun weekend or week last week for me. And I think that I might be wearing the same shirt that I wore last week. And the only reason I know is because I did get my hair cut and colored last week and I wore this shirt and there's dye on the sleeve. I'm like, Oh shit. I I think I'm officially just gonna grow go gray. That's where I'm at in my life. Because you can see the, the last time I got it colored. Gray. Did we talk about that last week? No. Well the I, people who let it go gray. Have you seen? Okay, so my mom has the most gorgeous gray hair. It is like silver and hints of red and blonde, and it's like so dimensional and it's like very fine, like the strands are very fine and silky, and I was like if I had that color gray, I'd be super happy about it. Like, so on TikTok, if you go on TikTok, because I, same boat as Remy, and I contemplate it. And if you knew me, if you know me, if you knew me at all, I was blonde for a long time. And I was blonde because it was easier to hide the gray with blonde, where it's not easy to hide the gray 
with this gothic color. And um, so where was I going with this? Oh, so then I was like, maybe I should just go gray because I'm getting sick of this. I'm not good at maintaining anything. So script, you should go to TikTok and look at those videos for me of the women who let it go gray. Like, I don't know if I could actually do it because it, it looks like shit for a while when the gray is like right here. Could you imagine me gray till right here? And well, then and like, I, I'm still lucky because it's not like blocks of gray, right? It's just all the different, it looks like, it looks blonde until you look at it in the light. So I think, I think Mine I would have felt like that. Mine I, looks I'm a, gray. I'm officially going to roan out. That's where I'm at in my life because I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Who knows? It's... Well, it sounds like you might be a pretty roan. I will not be a pretty roan. Yeah, I mean, I, when I look at my mom's gray hair, I'm like, man, it's such, it's so pretty. Like, also, if I was my mom, I would have like giant hot pink streaks underneath because it's like her hair is like very silvery and very like a very nice texture. I'm worried my gray is not going to be a nice texture, and I think that's the worst. It's not even the color for me; it's the the texture. Yeah, mine will probably be coarse and yucky and. I, kudos to the ones who are willing to give it a shot and do it and like go all in because I do think it looks like really cool. I just don't know if I'm there in my life. And, uh, we uh, had speaking of good sp changing subjects, but speaking of the good that comes into our lives, we have a show on March 18th and 19th and we had some people um, come forward and give us a lot of added money for a show at the house so we can have a big show at the house, That's which sucks so awesome. because it's the same weekend of your horse sale. But uh, so we have 10,000 added and 5,000 of it is going to our number six sorting alone. So it's like all for the novice riders. And, and, no, and don't ever, I mean, so here's the dealio is like, there's literally shit going on every single weekend for Remy and I, I mean, I have most recently, like some days I can do some weekends, I can do a horse show Saturday and Sunday, but I need a break because it gets to be a lot. So don't ever apologize. Like, yeah, well, it's for us you had... me putting that horse show on our horse that weekend. I can't believe that you did that. Well, it's like for us. So we've, oh, we've had Valentine's day shows for like the last 14 or 15 years. And then, um, we've had the St. Patrick's day show because, I also know this because it's Christine's husband's birthday, St. Patrick's Day. We've had that show for 20 years. So um, we're doing a fun, but it's like all the added money is going to the novices. So we have 10000 to the number six sort alone, and then 3000 to the nine sort. But we're doing a best use of green. So kind of like my ladies' night, but not for ladies only. Uh, Three Man Two Gate on Saturday night with a barbecue sponsored by our cattle company because we just got all the beef in, like and that. it is delicious. <laughs> Very great. And then you guys have a horse sale, so it'll be a. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now, barring Mother Nature, you can hit her. You can throw a rock and hit a shell any weekend for the next couple of months. And look at me, it's raining today, so I'm gonna finish the Vegas flyers for anyone that's interested in coming to the Let It Ride Penguin Sorting in Las Vegas. That we today. have a show next weekend that I still haven't. I mean, the date has been out there for a long time, but I still have not done the flyer yet. A, because it was supposed to just be a KPH show, which is like a fun show. And then we thought, oh, we'll do it as an RSNC show. But then it's so hard to find help to do the computer system. That's right. You got to figure it out. Yeah. Just do it. No, I'm not. So I was going <laughs> to. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. It's just, we're just going back to the KPH. KPH show is probably going to be a little small, fun show. Wrap up the season. So I had that to get out yet, too. Um, we had our cowgirl sort this last weekend. So much fun. Like, so much fun. I know um, all the weeks are blurring together. I wasn't sure if this was, if that was last week. I know. <laughs> it just, it does feel like it's blurring together. And I've had so much company. So somebody's always here, Remy. Uh, my sister's here right now, Paige. Shout out to her because she watches us faithfully. Um, Anyway, my friends Kim and Anne, which we have not been together since uh, Brennan and I got married in 06, they were here and they're hilarious. So they're going to kill me for this and I really don't care. 
Kim is 50 ish. Well, and you're, not, you're not going to see him for another 10 years. So it doesn't matter. They can't. True story. Assault, you know? <laughs> so they're wild women. I mean, there's like no doubt they're wild women. But like I said, Kim is 50 and Anne is 60. And they were coming in on Wednesday night. And they told me, you know, because they're both Arabian girls. Arabian chicks are crazy. Okay. And uh, just like the horses they ride. Yeah. Um, so anywho, they're like, neither one of them had been to Scottsdale for a very long time. And they were all excited because all of their friends, their old friends from the past were going to be there. And last week was set up. So they were like going to be, go out for drinks with the setup crew when they got in. So I go out and shore on Thursday morning. Like they are nowhere in sight. Um, I did a bunch of shit. I was out there chored, nowhere in sight. I came back in the house. I had paperwork to do. I made them breakfast and it's like nine o'clock and Brandon's like, have you seen them? Are they even here? I'm like, no. I said, I'm kind of afraid to go into the trailer because I don't want to wake them if they're here. And he's like, I'm going to check. So he goes, sees that they're here, comes in the house and he's like, oh, they're here. I'm like, I'll take them coffee. So I take them coffee, walk in the trailer. I'm like, what time did you guys get in? They got in. They did not get, they did not leave Scottsdale until like three o'clock in the morning. They did not get to my house until almost 5 a.m. Once again, Anne is in her fit, or Anne's just turned 60 and Kim is 50. Hey, party on, man. Party on. Uh oh. That they it came back right away. So they had me just dying. They got an Uber here, which was a Tesla. You need to, I mean, you should really heard them explain the story because it was freaking hilarious. They had to stop and charge a Tesla on the way here. <laughs> that'll, that'll, it, it happens. Uh, you have to be, you have to be careful with Tesla. You have to be take careful with Tesla when it's cold too. Because uh, we have a client that drives a Tesla, so. And, uh, but look, they had a good time. They did have a good time. Uh, so much fun. And then we did foot sorting afterwards. Okay. There is like nothing better than ending the day with a bunch of cold beverages, fun ass people, sorting fresh cows on foot. Dina Finley tried to t like bear hug one at the gate and she got her ass like ran over. <laughs> We do, we, so we do uh we do paddle sorting a lot and um shout out to Michaela uh Michaela Thorlickson who also listens to us but she had a jaw surgery when she was younger and so we're paddle sorting so now we've got like the long paddle right and she goes running to into the herd like with her paddle fling like flung behind her and James gets on the microphone and he's like Michaela we just paid to fix that don't lead with your face like Cause she's running like face first into it. I love paddle sorting. I also love paddle sorting because um, people make the same mistake on foot that they make on horseback. And I was like, see, it is really not your animal. It is you. You can't even blame your horse this time. You're taking a bad angle on foot. I do, like, there's oh. no horse. But it is. I, I, I love. I love <laughs> paddle sorting. I think it's. I think it's the best. Oh, we were dying. It. Well, because these cows were fresh and they were kind of big and. Um, yeah, it was it was hilarious. It was a hoot and a half for sure. And I was just gonna say something else about that. Oh, somebody sent me anonymously a letter last week and it was like perfect timing. So whoever <laughs> sent that anonymously, thank you. Um, I know, I was a little worried and you're like, did you get a letter? I was like, no, I didn't get a letter. You're like, I got an anonymous one. I was like, was it good? Because we don't really have hate mail yet. So was it good? And you're like, yes, it was good. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Like, I wish I was that person who did nice things like that. Like, I'm not that person. I wish I was, though. Um, so your cowgirl sorting leads into our topic today. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, also, I forgot. We had a show last weekend. Both my boys rode. They rode awesome. My oldest one had to ride my black mare because I sold his other gelding, which was a heartbreak and a half for him. But um, 
So thanks, Bronson, for making sure that a little kid could pin on her before I stuck mine on her. You sold the ranch horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is so hard um, when you sell a kid's horse because, like, for me, we everything's for sale. But the kids' horses are something that we always try to hang on to. But the kids generally, they advance fast. So with the advancements, you have to move them on a horse. You have to move horses for them. Is and that the kids' horse thing is really hard for me. I know. My husband's like, I can't believe you're not that upset. And I was like, well, you can blame my mom or my dad. I don't know. I had a pony that I was like, I'm never going to sell this pony. I love this pony, blah, blah. And then we sold her when we were, I was like nine. And so I guess, you know, yeah, that, 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 to. that day was hard. But like, I, he's a very, a very nice gelding that I sold. Very pretty, like all the things. And I sold him to another guy that was looking for a big, pretty gelding that you can sort and pen and rope and cut on. And, you know, he gets to go live closer to the beach and enjoy his life. So... Kyle you know, was fine. I, Once he got to ride Chata, he was happy. So, you know, it just onward and upward, man. Yeah. My old veteran soldiers, I, I don't say goodbye to. I say goodbye to everything else, but not them. I don't, I don't, I have, they all hold a special place in my heart because of all the good things that they've done for her children. Yeah, I've, I've only got a couple, but I only, I only got enough pasture space for like, two of them and I said I got I know I got two so I know so uh going back to the topic this week because like if you listen to us you know that you're either gonna probably when I, I but I've said it before like we talk about things that come up in our lives and so that could be people might be like oh we're staying away from them we don't want them <laughs> talking about us next week on coffee with the cowgirls but anyhow um, over the weekend, there's this woman who we just met and she's just getting into sorting. She's a doll. Um, and actually she just started riding in April, never rode a horse in her life. She was a, um, bodybuilder. She's not that damn big, but she was a bodybuilder and she just started riding horse in April. She has come far fast i love and, I, I love me a late bloomer yeah and you know here's the dealio is we all start somewhere right i mean that's did you just start remy and you were freaking fantastic and amazing right away i mean i'm still not fantastic and amazing so no <laughs> But and, no, I, I think like you have, so I have a lot of late, that's why I say I love being a late bloomer. We have a lot of clients that come to us later in life and some of them have never or have barely ridden or they did some trail riding, like, and especially because out here we have a lot of men's and women's riding clubs, like that they kind of like do like the cowboy camping deal and they go on these trail rides. Well, they might've ridden in those, but that's sitting on a horse is not riding. So I have a lot of late comers to this sport and you have to think it's about it. My favorites. Yeah, I but like you have to think about it. If you were really good at something else, like if you're a bodybuilder or you're really good at golf, like it takes swallowing your pride to go start a new sport late in life. A new sport that like makes you be in control of something else's brain. And then if you sort like another 10 things brains in conjunction with two more brains that are also on your team. So you got to swallow your pride. And it's, uh, it's, it can be difficult to come to this sport late, especially if, you know, if the road also, is a little bumpier. That's a lot of the people that lesson with me are the same as you're talking about late bloomers. They've all had um, a either a big corporate job where they are in control of a lot of things. Um, and also have another passion like say golf or bodybuilding, which they have complete control of. So to step onto a thousand pound animal and literally they have to relax and trust and they kind of have to let go of their control. And that is that right there is the hardest piece of it because they, everything in their life, they've been able to control. And I tell them, 
you're going to get hurt if you don't relax. You have got to relax. And they always say, it, that's the hardest part of all of this is relaxing because I am in control of everything and now I'm giving control to this animal and that is stinking hard. I'm like, most definitely. No, it is. It's a, like, you know, my big joke is that I am the anxiety beacon for everyone that has anxiety around me. I attract them. Like if I had a Care Bear symbol, that's what would glow when people with anxiety are around. And it's hard because of like, you can't micromanage, you can't take control, you can't be in full control. And the more that you want to be in control, the worse, the worse this sport and just riding is in general for you. It is so good. Like, I think that I see it more now because I'm working with more of those people. Um, how good this sport actually is for somebody who has a hard time giving up control. Like it forces you to relax. And I didn't, I mean, now, cause I've had so many conversations with these different ones and I like, I do understand because I was there. I mean, Remy, I don't feel like I really started riding to my potential or ability until probably a year and a half ago because I was getting in my horse's way because I always wanted so much control. I wasn't relaxed and I did not understand that now, but I understand it. I didn't understand that then, but I understand that now. And it's because I see it in these other people and I was, because I was doing, I was doing it and I finally quit or I finally am starting to relax. Yeah. And I mean, like I, so it's like, I always tell people like, Oh, how are you going to do this? I'm like, ah, ride the crazy, right? Like, that's what my motto in life is. Like, just ride the crazy in everything, horses, situations, whatever it is. I don't fight. And um, my superpower as a horse trainer, because we all have one, is that I don't get emotional and I don't get upset when I'm riding. So they can do whatever they want. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I'll sit on you longer. I'll, I'll deal with this. But um, one of my good girlfriends was taking a lesson Tuesday and she was fighting through some stuff with her mare and her mare's really good for about six or seven runs and then she starts to fall apart and not really fall apart but not as snappy and if you keep riding her through it then she comes through it again and so my girlfriend's like she's not doing this and she's not getting to where i want her to and i'm like send her send her for your cow quit fixing her face quit making everything perfect send her and she's like fighting with me and fighting with her mare and like i'm not letting her stop like i'm not letting the girl breathe i'm not letting the horse breathe like send her send her again and um I'm sorry to her husband because they like video everything. And he's like, I had to laugh. He's like, because I'm yelling at her and I go, I, I go, I don't want to fucking hear it from you at a full run, right? Like, I love you. Ride your fucking horse. About the seventh cow, that mare drags her ass, puts her head down, and goes back to work. Can you hear me? Hello? Are you back? Are you not back? Breck. You have internet goblins again. Okay, Breck, you need to go out and then come back in. Your mic is off. Your microphone is off down there. There you go. Okay. Here we yeah. go. There I can go. hear you now. So, but I, you know, like, if there's like a video of me yelling, you like, I love you, but ride your fucking horse. Just ride your horse. And all the situations come out, but it's the same thing. She has anxiety. She wants to micromanage. It feeds into her horse. And I'm like, your life is not that hard. Sorting is easy and fun. Let it be easy and fun. But everybody wants but more But that's control. hard. And I've yeah. never, I mean, this wasn't even supposed to be a conversation today. And here we are. <laughs> but uh, um, I never realized it until like helping these other people. And I'm like, that is what it is. And I was a product of that too. And I probably still am. I'm just getting better about it. Yeah, you have to, you have to recognize it. And also the first step, especially with people that are either very good in business or very good at other sports is again, being humble enough to realize that they aren't in full control and that they have to relax because, um, my favorite thing is like when you tell, I had this one client and, um, he's like, Hey, breathe, relax. And she goes, I am relaxed. And her shoulders are up here. And I was like, Nothing about your body set says you're relaxed. Nothing. It but is amazing how many people don't breathe. Like, 
So our big thing, right? Come to the hole, turn around, take a deep breath. Come to the hole, turn around, take a deep breath. When you're loping horses, right? Because I stand in the middle now like an English trainer because apparently I've reached that point in my life. And uh, sitting out there with my coffee cup and I'm like, shoulders back, chin up and breathe. Open your chest. And they're like, I've never breathed like I this on a horse. I make them open their mouth. I make them open their so mouth. So I do, I do the chin up. Open shoulders, open chest, because you can't stay tight if your chest is there. And a lot of stuff leads into it, but, you know. It's just amazing down. how many people don't breathe when they're riding. I, Because I just, we're just working on loping circles and mm-hmm. figuring out how to use your legs and your hands together. And I'm like, okay, open your mouth and breathe now. In and out. I don't care what you do on your horse right now. Just focus on that. In and, and out. And using your hands and feet separately, right? Because that's yeah. the other thing is they're like, I am turning with my left hand. I am turning. I was like, your hands are not connected. Like they can move separately. Just, yeah. Just, just so you know, they, they're not connected together. But Talking yeah. about anxiety. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. We're going to go back to, so we, you have a new client who started in April, was successful in other things. Yes. yes. Okay. So we had to go back to that. Yes. So she tells me, um, she was at a horse show most recently. I was not there. And last weekend she gets here and understand she works a job that's a big corporate job. This is her release. The horses are supposed to be her release, a fun time. And she's new to it, which we all started, you know, at square one in our past. So whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, she said, Breck, I go to this horse show and she's like, this older woman, when I say older, my age, I feel like my age and old, that's older woman. So don't old, get, how about, get how, about, how about old enough to know better? Old Definitely enough to know better. That old is enough to know better correct. because I think that age creeps up higher because there's some people in their twenties that are doing shit. I would, I would stop doing that at 16, but yeah. she's beyond, she'd be on that age. She's old enough to definitely know better. Yeah. So I'm not offending anybody. I'm considering myself old. Anyhow, she said, Breck, she's like, everybody's so nice in this sport and but she's last weekend this lady I had this lady and she was we drew together and she literally like kind of ripped her ass before they even started the run like got all mean girl on her and then mean girled her out of the pen and I'm like you know what I said thank god those people are very few and far between just stay away from her, Kristen, and do not let that shit bother you. Okay. And I got to thinking about it afterward. And I'm like, I hate that. Like, I absolutely freaking hate that mean girl deal. Like, you are old enough to know better, such as you said, Remy. So, so it goes back to our conversation from two weeks ago about friendship, right? And where we talk privately and you're like, I don't have time for bullshit in my life. I don't, no. So I don't have time for bullshit either. I had two very close friends that got into it about a run. And there was, I think, some misunderstanding on both parts. And I got involved, but not really, right? The one girl told me why she was upset and hurt. And I go to the other girl and I said, look, you are two of my closest friends. I cannot have bullshit in my circle. So fix it, address it. Talk about it. If you guys don't want to be friends after that, that's fine. You're still my friends. We just have to separate you out. But again, I can't deal with bullshit, so fix it. Selfishly for me, right? I need you to have my back. Get your shit together. You're too fucking old to not deal with this. So they had a really good conversation at our horse show last weekend. I think. I mean, they said they did, so... Even if they didn't fix it, they I'm told me they fixed it. it. <laughs> so it's a uh, fix for me. If James looks at me, because he's like, listen to me talk to the one girl. And he's like, man, you rule with an iron fist. And I was like, yeah, I do. Don't like, don't fuck around and find out. Because if you make me have to choose and treat you like children, and I will. And these girls did not make me treat them like children. They handled it all on their own. But um, I, and it, it comes back to like, how do you treat people? So for us... And if anyone knows us in real life, right? My group is a lot to handle. We're a lot. Because we're loud and a little bit raunchy and uh, 
we have a million stories. The difference is that we want to include you into it. So from the outside, people think we're clicky. We're not clicky. Anyone can come join the shit show, right? But you got to dive in a little bit and we'll tell you every secret we have. We'll invite you in. But we don't stand for the mean girl stuff either because, again, this is fun. Sorting is fun. Penning is fun. You get into the sport. For me, I was I just had this conversation with James this week. These guys, there's a reason they don't cut, right? There's a reason they don't show cow horses or rainers or hunters and jumpers. They want a sport where they really get to enjoy their friends and their animal. And there's no better sport for that, really. Team penning and sorting, you get to be there all weekend if you want. You get to make a lot of runs on your horse, even if it's in training. It's still your animal, right? Like, it's still you riding it for the most part. So it's enjoyable. So why would you... Why would you treat someone like that? And like, what's the benefit of that, really? So you got them upset talking about anxiety. You give them anxiety before you ever walk in the pen. Well, like, I mean, those, that type of person is in any, like everything. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter what your hobby is. You're going to run or cross paths with somebody who is that mean girl person. And I guess it just, at the end of the day, it just pisses me off because once again, doesn't matter what hobby you were in, we all rely on new people coming into the sport of whatever hobby you may be involved in because new people is what keeps it going. Mm -hmm. Correct? No, 100%. Don't, and that's so. Don't be a fucking asshole to somebody who's trying to learn just, the ropes. <laughs> just don't be an asshole full stop. Like you don't even have to have a qualifier yeah. on that. But so again, we have a, I have a client that um, she's from Washington. She used to go to like Winnemucca and Las Vegas. Her daughter lives not far from us. They just had their first grandbaby. Short, shout out to Heather and Tori, little Ainsley. Um, so she's down here for a month because she's a contract nurse. So she got to like work her schedule around her first grandbaby being delivered and threw in coming down to ride with us for a month. So um, she said, like when we were, I was helping her yesterday, it was her and her husband in the round pen. And um, she goes, I didn't, she goes, and she's from Southern California originally. She goes, I just didn't know what it'd be like coming into this because you guys have like this big group that comes and rides. And she's like, everyone has been so nice and so welcoming. And, you know, you're all very encouraging. And I said, you know, but part of it is that's what we foster, right? Like, and it wasn't at your show that it happened, but you have to foster those kind of relationships to make sure, like, you have to set the example. You have to be inclusive. You have to do all those things. Aside from like, yes, from a business standpoint, we need new clients. We need new blood. That's how we, um, you know, I manufacture new clients. Uh, every hobby evolves. <laughs> and they do, but it's like, you have to, like, you have to manufacture new clients. I can't rest on my laurels of that I've done a good job and built this customer base and it'll always be here because no matter what you do, someone's always going to leave or, you know, move on with their life. Cause sometimes you lose clients just to attrition. Like they decide like their kids playing football this year and they don't want to go to shows, but you have to foster that environment of being welcoming. And again, like I'm the blunt one, right? Like I don't sugarcoat very many things or at least not very often. But what happens for that is I attract the people that like my honesty, that like what I have to say. And, um, you know, but I wouldn't stand for something like that. And that we've had that happen at our shows where you have to pull someone aside. Because also sometimes people don't know what it sounds like, right? Like they're not trying to be mean. Going back to my two girlfriends that were fighting, I think the I think tone had more to do with someone's feelings getting hurt than actually what was said. But again, like, I'm not going to let it sit there and, and get cancerous inside the barn because and inside my circle of friends because. Well, and that's what I did tell her, too. I said, you know, I do top hand cowgirl the way that I want to do it. I have total control over it. The mean girl shit I don't allow. I, I can control all of that for the most part. I mean, if I hear it going on, I can go stop it. Because at the end of the day, the thing that is most important to me is I love horses and I love good people mm -hmm. and I want them to continue on with the sport. 
And if you have toxic people around you or in the circle, then those people who want to enjoy their horse will soon not enjoy it either with you or at all because they don't want to be in that toxicity. So it's, I, it, I, it, it's, like, it's like, it is cancerous, right? Like it, all it yeah. takes is a little infection to infect everything. And but I do not control the sortings. And I told that person that I'm like, I can control the top hand. I cannot control what happens at the sortings. This did not happen at my house. So no, but the thing is, if you show that you have a circle that's capable of withstanding some of the blows, right? Some of the negativity and it gives them still, an, it gives her another safe space to come to. She's still yep. going to enjoy it. But what happens is, especially like mean girls have a way of making you feel alone. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I, and so, like, and so if you feel alone, well then a lot of things, unless you're a very strong person become an assault on you stuff that maybe you wouldn't have seen in that light before, but when someone makes you feel like that, and again, right, you need someone to check your behavior because we've all done things that we regret. And again, a lot of times it's not intentional. Yeah. Like, ba ba again, back to my importance conversation. A lot of people think they're more important than they are. And so they treat people with a certain disrespect, whether it's intentional or unintentional. And I, I, again, calling bullshit out, right? You have to have a friend that's going to tell you like, that's not nice. Or not a good friend. Sometimes it has to be a stranger that's like, yeah, that's not nice. Like, that's not nice behavior. Would you like that? What are your intentions with acting that way? Um, I'm just like, girl, stay the hell away from her. Like, I know that it was your draw, right? So you couldn't. But I'm like, do not take anything that she says to heart. Walk away. Don't even entertain what the hell she just said. Yeah, and but again, right? Like, it's good. it's good to have you as that not even as a hype person, just as that sounding board, like, hey, it's one person. It's one person's opinion. Yeah. It's not everybody's. And, and come join us for a good time, you know? I just can't, like, I just don't understand, like, I be, okay, it, well, A, it's, like, it's exhausting to be that person who puts so much thought and effort into being a bitch. I mean, because at the end of the day, that's what it is. Like, it takes a lot of energy to be that mean girl person. I'm like, what? It's, it's, I, I, I think for? that people don't realize all the, all the energy it takes to really be negative, right? And then like really mean girl behavior is the appearance of being nice at first and then being mean. And I was like, I can't, I can't put that much effort into anything. I don't have enough of me to put effort into it. But I, and, it goes back to kind of what we're dealing with out here. You know, I, we, like I said, we had some people come forward and give us big added money for a show at the house because they know how hard we work and they want us to offer a better product, but we were kind of getting run out of our own sandbox that we built and we could have either laid down or stayed steady. It wasn't that I, I've had the, like I said, I've had the dates for 20 years. I always have them out. I had them out early and someone scheduled and then wanted me to back down. And uh, they were, there's some mean girl behavior going on with that too. And I was like, cool. Thank you for showing me just exactly who you are. And I'll mark it down. But again, like I'm strong enough as a person to be like, I'm gonna smile and nod and yell for you still when we're at shows because I don't want to expend the energy being mean to you. It's not worth it to me. Right. Like it's not worth you touching my personal peace. It's not worth me being upset about something I can't control. And um, if you really disliked me that much, maybe we should have had a conversation instead of, you know, I'm also not passive aggressive at all. Like I'm just outright aggressive. So, but it's, again, it's like from some people that you, that you think you should know better. And I, I guess like I, I was never the cool kid, so I didn't have a lot of mean girl behavior because I was always a fucking weirdo. So I didn't I didn't have the benefit I didn't have the benefit of being cool enough to be a mean girl. So I just had to be the weird one. And yeah. Uh, <laughs>
never been that person. I don't feel like I'm that person. I mean, if you piss me off, I guess I can be mean, but no. Yeah, but see, being pissed off is not mean girl behavior. The mean girl behavior is when you think you're better than people. I don't think I'm better than anyone. I don't think anyone's better than yeah. me. I just, I, uh. <laughs> but that happens in the workplace too. Like, it uh, well, so that's so like, you know, it's that whole unimportant versus important thing, right? Like, I think we all live in gray. I think most people don't put that much thought into their actions. But I, I dealt with it a little bit in college, too, where you'd, like, have someone, you're like, what did I do to piss you off that bad? Like, and aren't you bored of being mad at me? Like, isn't that like, not? Because, like, I don't react. So, and I've never really reacted. It takes a lot. Again, we've talked about it a lot. Like, once I react... My like once my fuse is lit, you should be I'll, scared. I'll fucking burn your house down. But I could also tell you you're a piece of shit, burn your house down, and then smile and walk away and walk right by you the next time I saw you. Like I just don't hold grudges because it takes up too much emotional space, right? Being upset takes up emotional space. So again, going to some of the stuff we're dealing with out here, I James and I are having a conversation and they go, look. I am a soldier and I will go to war. I will go to war for my friends. I will go to war for strangers. I will go to war, but I don't want to, right? It's not that I'm seeking out the fight, but if the fight comes to me, I'm going to fight and I'm going to fight for everything that I'm worth. And James looked at me because you are so black and white for, for someone who says everyone lives in gray. I said, I'm black and white about decisions. Like once I've committed to a course of action, I'm committed. Like, Fuck around and find out then. But before that, I'm just like, can't we all get along? Can't you just ignore me if you don't like me? Harmony. Don't come, like, don't come for me. And I think that's like where people get confused because I'm like, don't come for me. We're good. Ignore me. Don't poke the bear. Let me live. Let me live my life. Like I'm not. I'm letting you live your life. And then they keep coming, and I was like, no, no. I'm not passive. I tried to ignore you, but you didn't let me be passive. So now. I'm going to suit up and fucking kill you or not, you know, I don't know, but it's, I understand why I end up looking scary to people because I look again, I want to be all love and light, but there's a lot of go fuck yourself sprinkled in there. I just, uh, oh. and, and again, to my circle of friends, I have built an army behind me that will follow me into war because I've given them love. I've given them loyalty. I've shown what it is. So I didn't have to call on them to back me, right? I didn't have to put the call out. They were already there. And um, I hate confrontation. So yeah, I don't care. Again, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't make me anxious. It just, but I don't. Anxiety, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, last week on Friday. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it was Friday. It was like 1030. I mean, it's still morning, kind of, and I'm morning giving them life, and I've got my children. They cause me anxiety. Like, why do they always want to be around me? God damn it. So, anyway. so side note, before we finish the story, in California, we have something called Ski Week. Um, well, it depends on where you go to school. Where I went to school, is called Ski Week. Most of the private schools is called Ski Week, but it's President's Day week off, right? And I saw Molly Sims. She was like the actress and model and on TikTok. And she was like, my two favorite things in the world are one, being with my kids. Two, and two being away from my kids. And I was like, because and like her hashtag was like hashtag ski week. And I was like, oh my God, I get it. Because we saw my brother when we picked our kids up because they didn't have school last Friday either. He's like, do they realize we have 10 days with these kids? Like, I'll pay them more money for the day. <laughs> yeah, take them. Well, yeah. So it's so funny because. Like, they love to be around me, evidently, all the time. So I'm all out there giving the a time. All the time. <laughs> I'm giving a lesson, and those little shits are out there. Like, they look like they're part of the Indian relay races, bareback with a halter, running laps around my arena while I'm trying to give a lesson. For me, that is normal. For these people, it is not. You know what it makes their horses when my kids are going 90 around the arena, it makes their freaking horses scared, Remy, because they're like, there's, oh my God, there's little midgets out here running around well, really They're fast. like, if they're, if they're running, should we be running? What are they running from? That's what happens. That's what happens, folks. Like, 
when the horses are running really fast and one is like, you can just see them like one's loping soft and slow. And all of yeah. a sudden this horse goes, zoom. They kind of cock their head and look like we should be doing that too. And then they start getting whipped up and I'm like, okay, you guys. So I'm sitting there trying to give a lesson. My client is a little hesitant, a little nervous, like, of everything going around, I can see that she's tense. I'm getting tense because the kids are out there and then I've got other people out there that I'm kind of nervous about too. Like, are they gonna hit her? Are they gonna stop for her? Because I don't really know. I mean, 10.30 in the morning, I thought, I'm gonna have a beer right now. Like, okay guys, you gotta get the hell out of the arena. I'm like, no more, no more. So she comes over to me and she's like, I need a water. I'm like, that's fine. He's like, I, I need a vodka. It's fine. Don't worry. About it. I need a pickle break as well. So she comes back and I'm like, did you get a drink? She's like, yeah, I just downed a glass of wine. I'm like, hmm, 1030 in the morning. I'm like, You've got anxiety right now. I've got anxiety and I'm not even on the horse. I'm just watching you and it's giving me anxiety because I don't want anybody to do something bad to you. <laughs> no. So, uh, so, okay. So this goes back to the whole girl gang and mean girls and all that right because i use girl gang in a good way not in a bad way in a good way so the one lady that i was helping she stayed and watched a couple other lessons that i was giving and she's like well are you sure that i have to be this number in the penning because like i don't pen that well i know my horse is good and i looked at her and i was like you are a bad bitch act like it and she laughed and she was like well that's a good pep talk and i was like yeah i have those like i'm good I will build you up all day long, but I will not let you settle for less from yourself. Like be in control of it, which also, you know, that that's anti mean girl behavior too, is you have to pump your friends up and make sure that they really feel not just your friends. You have to pump everyone up, make sure that they feel like they are, um, that they are good. I had another friend that hadn't been to a show in a long time and she went and she won the first class she entered and I called her and she answered. I was like, what's up now, bitches? What's up now? They thought they ran you off, but she came back and won. She's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, what's up now? So you have to, you, you have to build people up and you have to show people that they can be confident in themselves, especially when they don't feel confident. And then, so you don't feel confident, right? You're new to a sport, you're new to a hobby, you're new to a business, and you find someone that makes you feel less than, right? Mean girl shit. That can really shake someone's confidence. So you have to be the person that helps them slay yeah. their dragon at first. So I just feel like this week's conversation was a PSA about check yourself and make sure that you're being I'm nice to those around you and not being yeah. if you mean if you girl. can't be if you can't be nice just don't be mean just yeah. don't even be mean be nothing just yeah write down the and again right words have weight people words have weight and uh you know but i'm out here to be your hype man for whatever you want you're a bad bitch you got it drink another cup of coffee put your hair up in a messy bun throw on some gangster rap for me some like 80s pop for breck and like, get your shit done. <laughs> oh, side note. So we got a new car finally. And a uh, really boozy key ring. Oh my God. Isn't it pretty? James, like, I got, I sent a picture to Breck. I got like the little key cover. That's like a very pretty, it's like this color. It's like a sagey green. I was like, it's like that really, on the picture, it looks like that, like, 1970 green color. Yeah, it's not, it's like more sagey. It, it also looks light blue in some light with like the gold patterning and james looks at it and he's like do you think we have a lot of money or something i was like it was 5.99 on amazon let me have nice things oh that's funny but, uh, um I was going, oh so as far as music choices because you know you get like serious for like three months on there so james has it like set for all the old country stations <laughs> and uh it's always it's always fun when he gets in after me because it is not set to any of the old country stations and I have the volume up particularly loud. So uh, I bet he, not. he's expecting like Willie and, Willy and I got it like, you know, like Ice Cube from the early 90s. So awful. Awful. <laughs> so PSA, don't be mean. 
Yeah. If you see someone being mean, go be the soft place for the other person to land and then tell the other person to not be mean. And uh, just, just be nice. Lift each other up. Because for sure. you know, if you lift other people up, they're going to lift you up. You'll feel better about yourself. Um, yeah. Life is too short to be shitty. That you know what? That's my new motto. Life is too short to be shitty. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Well, um, hopefully this week goes better than next last week with uploading. Um, great talking to you, Remy. This weekend we've got our C Arizona State Finals, and you have. I have nothing this weekend. Look at me. Look at me. I mean, I've got a lot of cow stuff, but I have like no planned events. Then uh, the next week you have a show. And I have 10,000 added on the 18th and 19th here at the house and free tri-tip barbecue. Bow, bow. Right. And um, I love tri-tip. I think it's amazing. I know that you're new to tri-tip. I love it too. But it's the best. And <laughs> then uh, you guys have the sale. And then we got Vegas with yeah. all the money. And maybe we'll get our shit together and do a mini live in Vegas. Of course, yeah. in the barn. As if we don't have enough things going on, we will try to do that. You know, for me in particular, Vegas is in my whole yeah, life. Yeah, I get it. Oh. <laughs> but uh, we love you all. Yeah, thank you for listening. Have a great week, everyone. Until next time. Be bold. Be brave. Be humble. I just said that wrong. It's Bye, okay. Bye. <laughs>